dark web. A mysterious digital realm of the internet where secrets thrive and shadows conceal the truth. Within this underground world lived an illegal online marketplace hidden from search engines that the world would come to know as Silk Road. Silk Road offered untraceable transactions, a marketplace for the forbidden, and a sanctuary for those who believed in a world outside of regulation. It was the wild west of the internet. You could buy anything on Silk Road, from drugs and weapons, to hitmen and body parts. It would all be hidden behind Bitcoin and shipped straight to your door like a package from Amazon. But lurking in the shadows were global law enforcement agencies determined to unmask and take down the hidden kingpin behind this billion dollar empire. And they would begin a high stakes game of cat and mouse that would shake the very foundations of the dark web. Join us on this shocking journey, full of suspense and mystery, as we uncover how a young man named Ross Albricht built the largest online drug empire in history. Ross Albricht was born on March 27, 1984, and grew up in a loving family in the quiet suburbs of Austin, Texas. He was an Eagle Scout as a kid, and was known for his free spirit and sense of adventure. He excelled academically, securing scholarships to Texas University and Penn State to pursue a career in physics. He had a promising academic career, as well as a girlfriend he had met while at the university named Julia. Things seemed to be going well for Ross, however, he wasn't happy. He became tired of boring lab research and wanted to explore a new world, something that could give him a taste of freedom. So he started exploring psychedelics and reading Eastern philosophy. He also dove into the world of economics and soon began to grow a strong resentment towards taxation and government regulation. He saw them as a form of oppression and constraint and would often have arguments with other students about why drugs should be legalised and how the government had too much control over the people. Ross believed that citizens deserved a world of freedom, and that's what Ross wanted, to be free. So after completing his master's degree in 2009, Ross returned to Texas with his girlfriend Julia. He then embarked on a journey to find his true calling. Ross tried his hand at day trading, but that failed. He then tried to start a video game company, and that failed too. The setbacks were devastating. This was supposed to be the beginning of his brand new life, and it was off to a terrible start. While Ross was figuring things out, he got a job at a business called Good Wagon Books. They collected used books and sold them on digital storefronts like Amazon. But by the end of 2010, Ross would make a life-changing discovery. He came across a new digital cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. This new currency wasn't attached to any central bank and couldn't be traced back to credit cards. It aligned perfectly with what Ross believed, the government having less regulation over the people. And at that moment, Ross came up with a daring idea. He was going to create a website where people could buy anything anonymously with no trail whatsoever that could lead back to them. A website of complete freedom. A website that was going to change the world. Ross's vision was clear. He wanted to create an open marketplace where people could freely buy and sell anything they wanted. So he decided to center his new marketplace around drugs. He decided to call the site Silk Road, named after a famous ancient network of trade routes where people used to exchange a range of different goods and services. Now that the idea was in place, it was time to build the site. Ross worked day and night building Silk Road, but it was a very difficult task, especially since Ross didn't have a lot of experience with coding. 
But this was his destiny, so he was going to make it a reality. When his girlfriend Julia saw him working on the site, she became nervous and concerned. What if they trace the website back to you? But Ross wasn't worried and explained to her that he couldn't be traced because he was using a special web browser called Tor. Tor is a specialized browser designed to encrypt data and hide the user's IP address and location. It was originally created by the US Navy to protect sensitive government communications. But now it is often used to access the dark web so you can't be tracked or traced. This would allow Ross to remain completely anonymous. Julia was still a bit uneasy, but she decided to trust Ross's new business. After nearly a full year of working on the site, it was finally ready in January of 2011. There was just one problem. Ross didn't have anything to sell on the site. So being a capable scientist, he decided to rent out a building and grow his own mushrooms as the first product to be sold on the marketplace. Now his website was ready to launch, but now he had another problem. No one knew Silk Road even existed. Ross had to keep it a secret the entire time he was working on it, with only telling Julia. So he decided to get creative and do some advertising. He pretended to be a new customer of Silk Road and started posting on various forums, asking if anyone else had tried out the new website. This way, people wouldn't think that he was just promoting his own site. Ross's plan was that people would come and check out the site for themselves and that other sellers would eventually join the site and start posting their own products. But since his shrooms were the only product on the site, he had to wait for customers. He sat nervously as he watched the computer, when all of a sudden, he received an order, then another one. Soon orders were flying in, and Ross couldn't believe it. His marketing worked tremendously, and Ross would find himself completely selling out of all ten pounds of the shrooms he had grown. He then had to package everything up himself, and ship them out every day to his new customers. And it wasn't long before vendors started popping up on the site to sell their own products. Soon, a range of new drugs started listing. This caused the website to grow even faster, since everyone could now buy their drug of choice, and Silk Road would take a 6.23% commission on every trade. Ross envisioned Silk Road like a black market Amazon, so he even created a rating system for the site. This way, customers could rate the vendors and products that they had purchased. When Julia saw that harder drugs such as meth and heroin were now being sold on the site, she became extremely worried. So she asked Ross, what if someone overdoses or gets bad drugs that were laced with something else? Ross told her about the new rating system and how if a seller had a bad rating, no one would buy from them. Julia responded, how will they be able to leave a bad rating if they're dead? Julia's concerns would continue to grow, but so would Ross's pockets. Within a few months, Ross had already made thousands of dollars. He wrote in his journal to himself, Silk Road is going to become a phenomenon, and at least one person will tell me about it, unknowing that I was its creator. While Silk Road was becoming a massive success, articles began to circulate like wildfire. An article that was published by Gorka really put Silk Road on the map. Even major news outlets like ABC and NBC were talking about the illegal marketplace. However, not all of the publicity was good. Global law enforcement agencies started to put Silk Road on their radar and they focused all of their attention on tracking down the hidden kingpin. This worried Ross, and he started to grow nervous about running the site. But since he was protected by the Tor browser, tracking Ross would be near impossible. By this time, Silk Road had amassed thousands of buyers and hundreds of sellers, and Ross was raking in over $25,000 a month in commissions. However, things began to take a darker turn when Ross and Julia noticed that sellers were now listing guns on the site. 
This sent Julia into a frenzy. And so she said to Ross, you need to shut this business down. Think about why someone would need to buy guns anonymously. But Ross saw it differently and explained to Julia that guns were a citizen's constitutional right. He told her, it's the people's choice. Why should the government be able to have guns, but the people can't? As the two argued, Julia stormed off and went to her friend Erica's house to blow off some steam. Erica sat there in disbelief as Julia told her all about Ross running Silk Road. When Julia finally calmed down, she made Erica promise not to tell anyone. But secrets have a way of escaping. One day, Erica wanted to try Silk Road for herself, so she decided to buy some drugs from the site. Unfortunately, the drugs caused her to have a bad trip, and she ended up in the hospital. Furious about the situation, she stormed to Ross and Julia's house, and they had a heated argument. Erica was enraged, so she went home, opened her laptop, and made a public Facebook post. I'm sure the authorities would like to know about Ross Ulbricht's drug website. When Ross saw the post, his heart dropped. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Tears filled his eyes, and he felt nothing but panic and terror. Erica was going to get him sent to prison. So he immediately rushed to his phone and called Erica. He begged and pleaded with her to remove the post, asking her to never speak of it to anyone. Ross and Julia got into another heated argument. He was so angry that Julia would betray his trust like that. She then hit him with an ultimatum. Either shut down Silk Road or leave. So Ross packed his bags and left. He decided to leave the country and embark on an adventure across the world. He travelled to Asia, Australia and various islands. Ross was living the dream. He was travelling the world and by this time he was already worth millions in Bitcoin. However, he started to become very paranoid. The thought of FBI agents tracking his location filled his mind. After all, he was running the largest illegal website in the world, and so he would constantly look over his shoulder and pick secluded locations to work on the site. Silk Road's rapid growth also came with a lot of problems. There were many technical issues in the code since Ross had to build the site all by himself. This allowed for hackers to compromise the site and demand for Ross to pay them Bitcoin as ransom. Ross realised that he could no longer run Silk Road all by himself, and so he started hiring people from the Silk Road community to help him run the site. His employees would help with coding, moderating the site, and responding to any support issues. Ross's dream of a free market had come true. However, things started to get a lot crazier when sellers wanted to start listing body parts such as kidneys for sale. Ross thought long and hard about this. He thought this was a bit extreme, but if he interfered, it wouldn't truly be an open market. And so, he didn't interfere. This caused an even wider range of products to be listed on the site, growing the site even more. Silk Road had become the phenomenon that Ross envisioned. It was a complete slap in the face to the law, and the community looked at Ross as a hero. A hero of a revolution. As Ross and his new team were growing Silk Road, he started to build a strong friendship with a user named Variety Jones. Jones would help Ross with coding and strengthening the security of the site. The two became buddies and would chat nearly every day. Variety Jones also seemed to know a lot about the drug business, and so he became like a mentor to Ross. One day, Variety Jones sent Ross a message saying, hey, not to be a downer or anything, but understand that what we're doing could get us the death penalty or life in prison because of the US drug kingpin laws. Ross already knew this, but he believed that he was fulfilling his purpose with Silk Road. 
Variety Jones had an idea, though. They were both fans of a movie called The Princess Bride. In the movie, there's a pirate called Dread Pirate Roberts. However, it's not just one person. The name is a title passed down from one person to another. So Variety Jones suggested that Ross change his username on Silk Road to Dread Pirate Roberts, or DPR for short. This would give Ross deniability if he were ever caught. He could say that he once was the admin, but then sold the company and the title got passed down to someone else. So he was no longer in charge. Ross loved the idea, and from then on, he went by the name of Dread Pirate Roberts. In Silk Road's second year, it blew up with nearly a million users, skyrocketing Ross's net worth into the tens of millions, mostly in Bitcoin. And he was only 26 years old. Ross said by age 30, he wanted to be a billionaire. And by the end of the second year, Silk Road's value was over $1 billion. But then, the dark side of reality began to hit Ross hard. News broke out about people getting seriously hurt or even dying from stuff they bought on Silk Road. Like this tragic incident where a few young teens bought some LSD from the site. It was so strong that one of the kids thought that they could fly and jumped off their hotel balcony, falling 30 feet to the parking lot below. I would, I would just absolutely love to have seen what he turned out to be. This was a harsh reminder that the empire that Ross was building had devastating consequences. But on the other side of reality, the government was ready to turn up their investigation. Their objective was clear. Catch the hidden kingpin and destroy the Silk Road Empire. Hey guys, if you've enjoyed this video so far, please do me a huge favor and hit the like button and subscribe. I'll be posting exciting stories on business, money, and crime. So also make sure to turn on post notifications so you'll be the first to see them. Thank you so much for your support. You're the absolute best. Now let's get back to this crazy story. As the hunt for the criminal mastermind was in full effect, the FBI and the DEA were having no luck in cracking the case. However, one man believed that he could crack the case quicker than both the FBI and DEA, and that man surprisingly came from the IRS. Meet Gary Alford, an IRS agent with a knack for thinking outside the box. Gary's task was to trace the money flowing through Silk Road, but that was nearly impossible because all of the transactions on the website use Bitcoin. But Gary came up with a brilliant idea. He thought to himself, Instead of trying to trace the money, how about I start hunting for the website's founder? But how could he track down someone that even the FBI and DEA couldn't? Gary thought that with a website as big as Silk Road, there had to be some type of promotion or marketing to grow the website. How did people find out about it in the first place? So Gary simply went on Google and started his detective work. Since he heard that Silk Road started in early 2011, he used advanced search and filtered to that date and looked to see if there were any posts about the site. He stumbled upon a post by a user named Altoid on a forum called Shroomery. Altoid's post mentioned Silk Road with a link to the website, but Altoid seemed like just a user of the site. So Gary searched the web for more clues. He found even more posts by Altoid and found similar promotions on various forums. It seemed like Altoid was the main one who was actively spreading the word about Silk Road's launch. Very interesting. Gary kept digging, hoping to uncover Altoid's real identity. When all of a sudden he struck gold, Altoid had posted a job ad on a forum looking for a Bitcoin technician, and within the post he left an email address. Ross Ulbricht at gmail.com When Gary saw this, he immediately looked up Ross Albrecht on Google. Ross's YouTube channel popped up, 
and he clicked on a video where Ross talked about his views on the government and libertarianism. Very interesting, Gary thought, so he continued digging for more. He then came across Ross's LinkedIn profile, which also had a bunch of anti-government posts. Ross wrote, The best way to change a government is to change the minds of the governed. To that end, I am creating an economic simulation to give people a first-hand experience of what it would be like to live in a world without the systemic use of force. Very interesting. As if that weren't enough, Gary then stumbled upon a coding question related to Tor on a website called Stack Overflow. The post was made by a user named Ross Albricht. However, within a minute of posting, they changed their name to Frosty. It's as if they realised they messed up by using their real name, so they quickly changed it. Gary was convinced that this was the mastermind behind Silk Road. So he asked a colleague of his that worked at the Department of Homeland Security to dig up any information on Ross Ulbricht. And in a shocking surprise, they found a recent incident where Ross had ordered fake IDs online. These fake IDs were intercepted, and the police actually went to the address that they were being sent to and questioned Ross. Ross had told them that hypothetically, anyone could hop on a website called Silk Road and buy some fake IDs. Gary knew that all of these clues couldn't just be a coincidence, but even all of these details weren't enough on their own. But little did Gary know that the FBI had finally found the Silk Road server's IP address and infiltrated it. They tracked the IP address all the way to a data center in Iceland, and once they got there, they found out that the real location was at an internet cafe in San Francisco. So Gary hopped on a group call with them to share all of his findings. He talked about how a user named Altoid did all of the marketing, and then left an email address with the name of Ross Albricht, and how Ross quickly changed his username to Frosty. The whole team then came to a shocking realisation. One of the agents revealed to Gary that after infiltrating the IP address, they found out that the Silk Road server and the computer had been both named Frosty. This was the guy. Gary then shared Ross's address with them that he got from the fake IDs incident. Turns out that it was just blocks away from where they tracked the Silk Road admin's IP address. There was no denying it now. They finally had Dread Pirate Roberts, the criminal mastermind who was behind all of Silk Road. Now all they had to do was catch him. The FBI was closing in on their target, but it wasn't as simple as just arresting him. All of the evidence they needed to convict Ross was right there on his open laptop, so they couldn't just sneak up and arrest him because he might shut the laptop down, and everything on his computer was encrypted, so if he closed it, all of the evidence would be gone forever. So the FBI had to come up with a clever plan. They had to wait and catch him in the act. So the team assigned a group of agents to trail Ross and track his every move. Ross woke up one ordinary morning on October 1st, 2013 and headed to his usual cyber cafe to work. But to his surprise, it was extremely packed. So he decided to go to the public library and find a secluded spot to run his empire. But little did Ross know that the library was filled with undercover FBI agents and they were ready to put their plan into action. Two of the agents pretended to be a couple that was having an argument. The argument got louder and louder, and Ross turned around to see what the commotion was about, when out of nowhere, the third agent turned around and swiped Ross's open laptop. Ross couldn't believe it, and he was quickly surrounded by FBI agents. Dread Pirate Roberts was finally captured, and just as they suspected, at the corner of his laptop was the name Frosty. The laptop was a gold mine of evidence. It literally contained everything that they needed to prove Ross was the one behind Silk Road. He had journaled every single detail about building Silk Road and managing the website. 
along with thousands of messages and conversations with his hired help and Variety Jones. Now this next part is completely insane, and you won't believe what else they uncovered on Ross's laptop. It turns out that two corrupt DEA agents were actually involved with Ross and Silk Road, and they were both taking money from Ross and stashing it in their own Bitcoin wallets. The first agent was Carl Force, who went by the username Knob. He convinced Ross that he knew a mole inside of the DEA and could feed him information about the case they were building against him, when in reality, Carl was actually the mole. Ross agreed and paid Carl over $750,000 in Bitcoin over several months in exchange for information about the Silk Road case. But Ross had no clue that he was actually talking to a corrupt DEA agent. But that's not even the worst of it. Meet Curtis Green, one of the admins that Ross hired to work and be a moderator on Silk Road. One day he stopped responding all of a sudden to Ross's messages, and Ross had no idea what happened to his moderator. Turns out that the police and DEA agents raided his house when he ordered some cocaine and placed him under arrest. $350,000 had then mysteriously disappeared from one of Silk Road's accounts. Ross thought that Curtis had robbed him, but it wasn't Curtis who stole the money. It was actually another corrupt agent named Sean Bridges, and he was a part of the same team that arrested Curtis. He then sneakily got on Curtis's computer and transferred $350,000 from Curtis's moderator account to his own Bitcoin wallet, thinking he would never get caught because Bitcoin was untraceable. But now get ready for the most insane part of this whole story. When Ross saw that Curtis had stolen $350,000 from him, he considered hiring someone to track down Curtis and get the money back. But his good friend Variety Jones recommended a more extreme route. He suggested to Ross that he should hire a hitman to kill Curtis. This would send a clear message that whoever crosses dread pirate Roberts would suffer deadly consequences. Ross was nervous about this. He never thought that he would have to have someone killed, and this was really crossing the line. But Variety Jones was his good friend, and so he trusted his judgement. Ross asked around to see if anyone could eliminate Curtis, and he got a response from none other than Carl Force the man Ross was paying for inside information. He said he knew someone who could get the job done, so Ross sent him 40,000 up front and another 40,000 once the hit was complete. But remember, Curtis had already been arrested, so Carl decided to stage his death. He sent a photo of Curtis's body to Ross to make it look like he was dead, when in reality, Curtis was very much still alive. Ross felt very sick over this whole incident, but believed that he had to send a message to anyone who crossed him. Ross would then end up hiring hits on five other people. But just like with Curtis, none of the hits were actually being carried out, so Ross was actually being scammed the entire time. Once all of this information was discovered, the two corrupt agents, Carl Force and Sean Bridges, were both sentenced to six years in prison. And now it's time for the epic conclusion to this story. What happened to Ross and the Silk Road Empire? Good morning to you. The FBI calls it the most sophisticated criminal marketplace on the internet. Thousands of drug dealers used it to sell drugs and completely hide their identities. In the aftermath of Ross's arrest, the news spread like wildfire. The world couldn't believe an ordinary guy in his 20s ran the world's most notorious drug website, valued at over $1.2 billion. Ross's family was in total shock. They couldn't believe that their sweet son, who had dreams of being a physicist, could become a drug kingpin. They insisted that Ross was framed for everything and that all of the evidence on the laptop was planted. During the 2014 trial, Ross's defence argued that he created Silk Road just as a social experiment, but handed it off when things got out of hand. 
The court, however, didn't buy it. The laptop's evidence was too much to argue against, and the jury reached their verdict. Guilty on all charges, including drug trafficking, money laundering, and running a criminal enterprise. Ross received two life sentences, plus 40 years, with no parole. This sparked outrage from the Silk Road community, and they even showed up to protest, claiming that Ross was a hero, and all that he did was run a website. Nonetheless, the legend of Silk Road continues to live on, despite its creator spending the rest of his life behind bars. Thank you for watching. If you thought this story was crazy, you won't believe how a man from Nigeria sold a fake airport for $242 million exclusively on BizFlix.